Today we're going to be talking about medians, altitudes, perpendicular bisectors, and angle bisectors of triangles. The point of concurrency is the common intersection point of three or more lines. Medians are the segment that connects the midpoint of one side to the opposite vertex. The median's point of concurrency is the centroid. The green line represents the median of this triangle. We know that this is the midpoint because the two tick marks on the one side of the triangle represent that the midpoint of that side is extending to the opposite vertex. These green lines represent the medians of this triangle. The point of concurrency is where they all meet is the centroid. An altitude is a segment that represents the distance from the vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. The point of concurrency is known as the orthosegment. The pink line represents the altitude of a triangle. We know this because the right angle symbol, which is on the opposite side of the vertex, shows that this is the shortest distance from the vertex. Where these three lines meet is the orthocenter. Since this is a right triangle, the orthocenter is directly on the right angle symbol. Had this been an acute triangle, it would be on the inside of the triangle, whereas if it was obtuse, it would be outside of the triangle. A perpendicular bisector is a segment that is perpendicular to the midpoint of a side. The point of concurrency is known as the circumcenter. The yellow line represents the perpendicular bisector of the triangle. We know this because the yellow line is placed on the midpoint of the triangle and is perpendicular because of the 90 degree angle symbol on the segment of the triangle. Where all three of the perpendicular bisectors meet is the circumcenter. This is their point of concurrency. Euler's line is a segment that is made up by the orthocenter, circumcenter, and centroid. If you haven't realized already, the circumcenter, the centroid, and the orthocenter are all collinear. This is known as Euler's line. This tan line represents Euler's line. It is created by the orthocenter, centroid, and circumcenter. An angle bisector is a segment that splits the angle into two congruent parts and goes to the opposite side. The point of concurrency is the in-center. The orange segment represents the angle bisector. You know this because it splits the angle into two congruent parts and goes to the opposite side of the triangle. The point of concurrency for the three angle bisector segments is the in-center. This is the point of concurrency that is not on Euler's line. And this is the finished product, showing each altitude, median, angle bisector, and perpendicular bisector. We have labeled all points of concurrency, such as the orthocenter, centroid, in-center, and circumcenter, as well as showing Euler's line. If you are drawing a triangle with any of the markings, such as an altitude, median, angle bisector, or perpendicular bisector, be sure to use the proper markings such as right angle and congruent symbols as these are vital. How to construct a median, altitude, perpendicular bisector, and angle bisector. The materials needed are a compass and a straight edge. First we will construct a median. We are going to be finding the median that goes from vertex a to segment BC. Step one of finding the median is to find the midpoint of the segment. In this case, the midpoint is segment BC. To do this, first you must place the point of the compass on the end of the segment. Next, you will measure the compass so that it's larger than half of the segment. After this, you will create an arc. With the compass as the same size, repeat these steps for the other end of the segment. Okay, so first I'm going to place the point on the end of segment BC. And I already made sure that the length of the compass is larger than half of that segment. Now, I'm going to construct an arc. Okay. 
and then I'm going to repeat the, these steps from the other end of the segment. If you haven't noticed already, you will see that these two arcs connect at two different points. After you draw this segment, you will notice that it intersects with the segment that you're trying to find the midpoint of. The point of intersection is known as the midpoint of that segment. You next mark the segment with congruent symbols to show that you just drew the midpoint. Your last step is to draw the median by connecting the midpoint to the opposite vertex. And there you go. You have now constructed a midpoint using only a compass and a straight edge. Yes, we will be constructing a perpendicular bisect. Alright, so first what we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint of segment FU. So to do this, you're going to place the compass on the end of the segment. Measure the compass so that it's larger than half of the segment. Create an arc, and then do the same thing with the other end of the segment. And then connect the points that the arcs meet. And after that, you will have a segment, and you will extend the segment to the opposite segment, and then you will add a right angle symbol. It sounded confusing, I will just show you. So, my arc has to be larger than half of this segment. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same thing from you. Now I'm going to connect these two points. And if you haven't noticed, this is at the midpoint, but it is also perpendicular to the segment. So if we extend it to the opposite segment, you will get a perpendicular bisector. There we go. And last but not least, add right angle, angle symbols. And also, we will have to add congruent symbols to show that this segment bisects segment FU. And you have just created a perpendicular bisector. Next, we're going to construct an altitude. We're going to be constructing an altitude that goes from vertex T to segment OM. If you haven't noticed already, triangle TOM is obtuse. This means that the altitude from T to OM will be outside of the triangle. First, we're going to extend segment OM. After this, you're going to draw an arc from vertex, which in this case is vertex T. The arc that you draw must touch segment OM twice. Label the points where the segment touches the arc as points A and B. Okay, so first we're going to extend segment OM. Next, we're going to draw an arc from the vertex, which is T, and it must touch segment OM twice. There we go. Label these new points as 
A and B. Alright, so next we're going to place the compass on A. Make sure the compass is larger than half of segment AB. Create a new arc and then repeat uh, steps 5 through 7 from arc B. And then label the point where the arcs meet as D. Next, you will connect D and T and then add a right angle symbol. Alright, so point of compass is on A. It's larger than half of AB. Draw my arc. Do the same thing from point B. Label this as point D. Connect point D with point T. And add a right angle symbol. And you are now done. You have created an altitude. Next I will show you how to construct an angle bisector. This is triangle NIK. We're going to be constructing an angle bisector from angle K. To find the angle bisector, first what you're going to do is place the point of the compass on point K. You're then going to create an arc that connects segment NK to IK. Label the points where the segments meet as A and B. Draw arcs out of the same size from A and B. Where these arcs meet, label the point as D. Connect point D to the angle that you are bisecting, in this case is K, and add congruent angle marks and you are done. Okay, so we're going to place the compass on point K, create an arc, label those points as A and B. Now draw a new arc, make sure this new arc, make sure the size of your compass is greater greater than half of AB. Add my new arc. Do another one from B. Label that as point D. Connect D and K, and then extend the line to the other side, add congruent angle symbols, and you just create an angle bisector. This is a map of the Lenape School District. You have Lenape, Shawnee, and Cherokee. The problem is that the district needs a sports facility office an academic office and also a superintendent office and they need each of these offices to be on the same street for convenient purposes conveniently they have four open lots one being on the circum center one beyond being on the centroid one being on the in center and one being on the ortho center since the superintendent had level 1 geometry at Lenape High School with Tom Tamborello, he thinks he knows what to do. He knows that if you want each of these buildings to be on the same street or in math terms collinear and also be on a point of concurrency in the school district, they all must be on Euler's line. So he puts the sports facility office on the Circum Center, the superintendent office on the Centroid, and the academic office on the ortho center.
He then names the street that all three of those facilities are on as Euler Street. The school district is ecstatic that they now have their three main buildings on the same street. Now the Lenape School District can move more cohesively as a union.